the connecting link between protozoa and porifera is proterospongia 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 belongs to order cyanoflagellata of phylum protozoa Proterospongia belongs to order Cyanoflagellata of phylum Protozoa, and Proterospongia happens to be the connecting link between Protozoa and Porifera because it exhibits characteristic features of both Protozoa and Porifera. Most of the Protozoans are marine, sedentary, sessile forms, except two families. You know, except the family Potamellidae. And family Spongillidae. Except these two families, rest of the Porifera's are marine, sedentary, sessile forms, either solitary or colonial forms. You know. Now they are covered by two layers. You know, the outer layer is called outer layer is called pinacoderm. The inner layer is called Cyanoderm. Instead of calling them true diploblastic, these two layers are referred to as epithelioid. See now. Instead of calling them epithelia, they are called epithelioids because the cells in these two layers are devoid of basal lamina. The outer layer is pinacoderm, inner layer is cyanoderm. The pinacoderm. So this is the pinacoderm. The pinacoderm is made up of several flat spindle-shaped cells called pinacocytes, and the pinacoderm is perforated by numerous apertures called dermal ostia. Dermal ostia are the modified porocytes. Dermal ostia are the modified porocytes. Then inner layer of the body wall is called cyanoderm. The cyanoderm is made up of cyanocytes. Between pinacoderm and cyanoderm, there is a gelatinous substance. You know, the gelatinous substance which is deposited with various cells is called mesohyl mesohyl the terminal aperture of the body is called os osculum the body cavity is called spongocele or paragastric cavity spongocele or paragastric cavity the porifers are characterized by the presence of canal system which is also called aquiferous system the most important functions of canal system are a food capture b respiration c excretion d reproduction that is it also helps in carrying gametes preferably spermatozoa from one animal to another animal the mode of circulation of water through the various intercommunicating chambers of the body wall and exit of water through the osculum is called canal system the canal system renders functions like uh, food capture that is nutrition respiration excretion and reproduction here now so as they are most of them are sedentary you know they mostly depends on they mostly depend on canal system for all these functions vital functions sponges if you look into the symmetry part you know 
the simple sponges are radially symmetrical while the higher sponges are asymmetrical. Now the sponges, the mesohyl is deposited with different kinds of amebocytes. The most important amebocytes of mesohyl are archaeocytes. Archaeocytes act as totipotent cells. They act as totipotent cells for the porifers. Now, apart from these, archaeocytes also give rise to gametes. Preferably ova, and they also help in digestion. They also help in digestion. They act as totipotent cells. They give rise to ova and they also help in digestion. Then another most important type of cell is quianocytes. Quianocytes are also called flagellated cells. These quianocytes maintain water currents. Maintain water currents in the spongoseal. Apart from this, they also help in digestion. They give rise to spermatozoa. They give rise to spermatozoa. Ova usually originate from archaeocytes, whereas spermatozoa originate from quianocytes. Okay, then quianocytes also help in transfer of sperms okay, to the ova to ensure fertilization. Then apart from this, there is another one called pinacocytes. As I made a mention earlier, pinacocytes form the outer layer perforated by dermal ostia which are the modified porocytes. Then apart from this, there are myocytes. The myocytes give rise to connective tissue fibers of the sponges. Then next you have uh, colonocytes. The colonocytes also give rise to the connective tissue fibers of the body wall. Then you have chromocytes. Chromocytes impart colors to the sponges. Then there are thysocytes. Thysocytes store reserve food material. Thysocytes store reserve food material. Then there are scleroblasts, scleroblasts, the spicule forming cells of poriferans are called scleroblasts, you know. The scleroblasts are of three types, calicoblasts which give rise to calcareous spicules, silicoblasts which give rise to siliceous spicules and spongin fibers. Calicoblasts give rise to calcareous spicules, silicoblasts give rise to siliceous spicules and spongin fibers made up of protein, sulfur and iron. Now the calcareous spicules, what is the significance of spicules remember, the spicules see now they have got taxonomic importance and also act as endoskeleton for the sponges, you know. On the basis of nature of spicules, you know, the entire phylum porifera is divided into three classes. The type of organization porifers is cellular grade of organization. The mode of digestion is intracellular digestion. And mode of nutrition is holozoic nutrition. Holozoic nutrition. In poriferans, both sensory cells and nerve cells are absent here now. And poriferans all are hermaphrodite or bisexual. With cross fertilization takes place. Cross fertilization occurs due to either protandry or protogyny and fertilization is internal. Fertilization is internal, you know. 
Apart from sexual reproduction, they also reproduce by asexual method. Asexual reproduction takes place by fragmentation and internal buds called gemmules. Internal buds called gemmules. Okay, some of them reproduce by fragmentation and uh, uh, certain freshwater sponges and a few marine sponges reproduced by internal buds called gemmules. The mode of cleavage is holoblastic unequal. Holoblastic unequal. And life cycle involves larvae. Life cycle involves larvae. Now, phylum Porifera is divided into three classes. Class Calcarea. Class Hexactinellida and Class Demospongia. Class Calcarea, Class Hexactinellida, Class Demospongia. Class Calcareans are shallow water sponges. They have got Monaxon, triaxon, tetraaxon spicules. Monaxon, triaxon, tetraaxon spicules are present. And the type of spicules in them are calcareous spicules. Body is made up of calcareous spicules, that is called calcareans, you know. Then they have got larvae. The larvae are amphiblastula and coeloblastula. Amphiblastula and coeloblastula are the larvae of calcareans. Then the most important examples are cycon, which is also called scypha. Cycon is commonly called urn sponge or crown sponge. Cycon is commonly called urn sponge or crown sponge. Then another example is leucosolenia and another example for this is clathrina. So leucosolenia, clathrina and cycon are the examples. The larvae are amphiblastula and coeloblastula. Cycon is commonly called urn sponge or crown sponge. Class hexactinellids are deep sea sponges. They have got triaxon hexactinel spicules. Triaxon, that is, spicule is made up of three axes arranged overlapping each other. That is why spicule appears six rate. Hence, they are referred to as hexactinellids. They are all deep sea sponges. Body is made up of siliceous spicules. Body is made up of siliceous spicules. The larva is trichimella larva. Larvae are trichimella. Trichimella is a larva of hexactinellids. The most important examples for hexactinellids are hyalonima, which is commonly called glass rope sponge, euplectella, which is commonly called venous flower basket. is also given as wedding gift in Japan. Another example is Pheronima, which is commonly called bowl sponge or old man's beard. So Hyalonima, glass rope sponge, Euplectella, venous flower basket, Pheronima, commonly called Bowl sponge or old man's beard, all three of them belong to hexactinellida. Now, the demospongians are deep sea sponges. 
they are all deep sea sponges the name itself indicates deep sea sponges the endoskeleton is made up of both siliceous spicules and spongin fibers siliceous spicules and spongin fibers demospongins are both fresh water and marine a few are fresh water that is they belong to family spongillidae and family potamillidae and rest of them are marine here now then they have got monaxon spicules monaxon or tetraaxon spicules are present monaxon or tetraaxon spicules are present here now and the larva is parenchymula is a larva of parenchymula is a larva of demospongins the larvae of calcarea remember amphiblastula and coeloblastula the larva of hexacnellida is trichemella the larva of demospongia is parenchymula or parenchymella larva the most important examples for demospongia are eospongia which is commonly called bath sponge hypospongia which is commonly called horse sponge spongia officinalis all these three of them there is no common name all these three of them are used for various domestic purposes they are used for mopping the floor cleaning the window panes so on and so forth because their endoskeleton is made up of only spongin fibers the endoskeleton does not contain spicules as a result uh, they they have water holding capacity you know you spongia hypospongia and spongia officinalis then apart from this there are clayona commonly called sulfur sponge or boring sponge next you have helicondria crumb of bread sponge then next you have chalina dead man's finger and is also called mermaid gloves next you have chondrilla commonly called chicken liver sponge next you have haliclona finger sponge haliclona finger sponge okay so all of them belong to demospongia eospongia commonly called bath sponge hypospongia commonly called horse sponge spongia officinalis all these three of them are used for domestic purposes clayona sulfur or boring sponge helicondria crumb of bread sponge chalina dead man's finger or mermaid gloves chondrilla chicken liver sponge haliclona finger sponge all of them belong to the class demospongia the most important examples i put before you all of them belong to demospongia now next we'll talk about another phylum that is phylum nidaria phylum nidaria is also called phylum silentirata nidaria is also called phylum silentirata the term silentirata was coined by leucart the term silentirata was coined by leucart and the term nidaria was coined by bands the term nidaria was coined by bands hashek divided the silentirates into nidaria spongiaria that is sponges and tenophora hashek divided the silentirates into 
phylum nidaria phylum spongy area that is sponges and phylum tenophora the term nidaria was coined by bans and the term cylindrata was coined by lucart the nidarians are mostly marine a few are freshwater they are both sedentary and free living solitary and colonial forms they are the first formed tissue graded animals first formed tissue graded animals or first form phylum with a tissue grade of organization and they are the first formed diploblastic animals first formed diploblastic animals with outer ectoderm or epidermis inner endoderm or gastroderm is the middle non cellular mesoglia the body cavity is called cilentiron or gastrovascular cavity you know now nidaria most of them exhibit radial symmetry most of them exhibit radial symmetry while class anthozoa of phylum nidaria exhibits biradial symmetry biradial symmetry one of the unique characteristic features of nidarians is polymorphism most of them exhibit a unique phenomena called polymorphism where each animal consists of various forms which differ from each other with regard to structure and functioning you know where each polymorphic form is called zooid each polymorphic form is called zooid the two basic polymorphic forms of nidarians are polypoid forms and medusoid forms polypoid forms and medusoid forms the polypoid forms are mostly vegetative in function the medusoid forms are meant for sexual reproduction the medusoid form is also called gonophore is also called gonophore it is an umbrella shaped free swimming sexual reproductive zooid the polypoid forms under this you have number 1 nematophore nematophore is also called sail it helps in floating number 2 siphanozooid siphanozooid or gastrozooid or it is also called polyp or hydrant so siphanozooid or gastrozooid or polyp or hydrant it is meant for nutrition it is provided with tentacles and stinging cells you now the main function is nutrition the next you have dactylozooid which is also called palpen or feeler or taster it is meant for offense and defense you know dactylozooid palpen or feeler or taster meant for offense and defense you know the next one is hydrophilia or philozooid it is meant for protection you know hydrophilia or philozooid is meant for protection you know the dactylozooid is also called tentaculozooid another name for dactylozooid is tentaculozooid okay the next you have another one called gonozooid gonozooid is also called blastostyle gonozooid or blastostyle is meant for asexual reproduction this gonozooid or blastostyle gives rise to medusa by budding okay so nematophore or sail meant for floating siphanozooid or gastrozooid or polyp or hydrant it is meant for nutrition dactylozooid which is also called tentaculozooid or palpen or feeler or taster is meant for offense and defense hydrophilia or philozooid meant for protection gonozooid or blastostyle meant for asexual reproduction 
then next you have another one called nectocalyx. Nectocalyx is meant for swimming. Nectocalyx is also called swimming bell. It is meant for swimming. Either there are about uh, seven zooids, altogether seven, six polypoid zooids and one medusoid zooid. Seven polypoid uh, zooids are present. The in the in a phylum hydra the Nidaria, there is an order called order Chondrophora and order Siphanophora of class Hydrozoa exhibit maximum rate of polymorphism. Class uh, order Hydro Chondrophora and order Siphanophora of class hydrozoa they exhibit maximum rate of polymorphism. There is a hydrozoan called halistemma. This halistemma belongs to class hydrozoa. Class hydrozoa and order chondrophora. It is the only nidarian with all the seven zooids. It is only nidarian with all the seven zooids and it happens to be the only nidarian which is bilaterally symmetrical. Now that polymorphism is one of the unique characteristics of all nidarians. Now, nidarians in may be unisexual or bisexual here now. Fertilization may be internal or external. Then uh, they have got a characteristic larva called planula. Most of them have got a characteristic larva called planula. And nidarians for the first time nervous system is noticed. It is in the form of diffuse type, in the form of a network that lies below epidermis. Another network lies uh, above gastrodermis, you know. They are present on either side of mesoglia. Then the nutrition is partly, nutrition is holozoic and digestion is partly intracellular and partly intercellular. Part of the digestion takes place in gastrovascular cavity. These partially digested food particles are devoured by endothelial muscular cells or nutritive cells of gastrodermis to bring about further digestion. Now, the digestion is partly intracellular and partly intercellular. Then all nidarians are characterized by the presence of cells called nidoblasts, which are commonly called stinging cells. The stinging cells and nidoblasts are meant for offense, defense, food capture, anchorage. Their main function is offense and defense. Apart from that, some of them even help in food capture and some of them even help in anchorage. You know. That is one of the unique features of nidarians. Presence of stinging cells is one of the unique features of nidarians. Hence, they are also called, due to presence of nidoblasts, they are also called nidarians. You know. Nidoblast is a bag-like structure that encloses a nematocyst or nidocyst within the, its bag-like structure. The nidoblast here now, like this it is a bag-like structure here now. Within the nidoblast, there is a nematocyst. This is the nematocyst here now. Nematocyst is deposited with toxic substance called hypnotoxin. Hypnotoxin is made up of phenols and proteins. And this is the outer one is nematoblast. The nematocyst is held intact by means of lasso. It is held intact within the nematoblast by means of lasso. Then it has got a trigger called nidocil. And upon stimulation, the nematocyst ejects its threaded tube outside, and through threaded tube, it injects the hypnotoxin into the prey and predators, makes them unconscious. Threaded tube has a swollen structure at the base called butt or butt shaft. On the butt, 
it has got small spines called spinnerets the small spines present on the butt are called spinnerets and the large spine there are three large spines on the butt shaft those large spines are called barbs the large spines are called barbs and the small spines are called spinnerets you know and this is the nematoblast which is meant for offense defense some of them even help in food capture and some of them even help in anchorage you know phylum didaria is divided into three classes class hydrozoa class kyphozoa and class anthozoa class hydrozoa class kyphozoa and class anthozoa now hydrozoa if you look into the important characteristic features of hydrozoa hydrozoans are both marine and freshwater they are solitary as well as colonial and in hydrozoa the stinging cells gonads and sense organs are ectodermal stinging cells gonads and sense organs are ectodermal now in hydrozoa the mesoglea is non cellular hydrozoans are radially symmetrical the medusa in hydrozoans is called craspidote medusa the medusa in hydrozoans is called craspidote medusa because medusa is provided with a muscular fold called velum so the medusa with velum is called craspidote medusa you know i repeat hydrozoans the medusa is called craspidote medusa you know big due to presence of velum and remember in hydrozoa stinging cells nematocysts and sense organs are ectodermal in origin the sense organs of hydrozoans are called statocysts the statocysts maintain balance of the body you know then hydrozoa the cephal um, polymorphism is very high you know highest rate of polymorphism is noticed in hydrozoans you know fertilization hydrozoa may be external or internal then the most important examples for hydrozoa are hydra which is commonly called freshwater polyp we have another example obelia commonly called sea fur or zoophyte obelia is commonly called sea fur or zoophyte another example for hydrozoa is physalia physalia is commonly called portuguese man of war physalia is commonly called portuguese man of war then you have another example here now velella velella is commonly called little sail or purple sail so all of them belong to hydrozoa hydra freshwater polyp physalia portuguese man of war velella little sail or purple sail obelia sea fur or zoophyte obelia is commonly called sea fur or zoophyte they all characteristic features of hydrozoans you know now in scyphozoa scyphozoans are commonly called jellyfish scyphozoans are commonly called jellyfish you now they are all marine all scyphozoans are marine and they are free living forms none of them is sedentary all of them are free living forms and they have got a craspidote type of medusa a craspidote type of medusa is present because in medusa velum is replaced by a rudimentary fold called velarium you know now in scyphozoans you now mesoglea is abundant jelly like that's why they are also called jellyfish you now and the mesoglea is deposited with amebocytes cells called amebocytes now in scyphozoans the stinging cells are present in both ectoderm and endoderm sense organs and gonads are endodermal in origin sense organs and gonads are endodermal in origin the sense organs of scyphozoans are called rophelia the sense organs are called rophelia the sense organs are called rophelia or tentaculosis 
Rufalia or Tentaculosis, they are endodermal in origin here now. Then all Scyphozoans are unisexual, fertilization is internal, fertilization is internal. In Scyphozoa, Medusa dominates in the life cycle. Medusaid stage dominates in the life cycle. Polyp is reduced. The reduced polyp is called reduced polyp is called Scyphistoma. The reduced polyp stage of Scyphozoans is called Scyphistoma. It is also called Hydratuba. Scyphistoma or Hydratuba. The Scyphistoma or Hydratuba gives rise to Medusae by transverse fission called strobilization. Transverse fission called strobilization. Now, the Scyphozoans have got two types of larvae. They are Ephyra and Planula. Ephyra and Planula are the larvae of Scyphozoans here now. And all Scyphozoans are exclusively marine here now. Then the most important examples for Scyphozoans are Aurelia, which is commonly called jellyfish, Rhizostoma, it is also called jellyfish. Then next we have example Carabdae. Carabdae is commonly called sea wasp. Carabdae is commonly called sea wasp. Pelagia is a phosphorescent jellyfish. Pelagia is phosphorescent jellyfish. Carabdae is sea wasp. Aurelia and Rhizostoma, both of them are also called jellyfish here now. Apart from this, there are two jellyfish. They are Chiropsalmus. and Chironex. Both of them are commonly called box jellies. These box jellies happen to be venomous even to the human being. Here now. They are happen to be the venomous even to human being. Here now. So, Aurelia, Rhizostoma, Carabdae, Pelagia, Chiropsalmus and Chironex are the most e important examples for Scyphozoans. And Scyphozoans also exhibit radial symmetry here now. Now, the anthozoans are also called actinozoa. Anthozoans are also called actinozoans. These anthozoans or actinozoans are exclusively, they are marine and they are biradially symmetrical. Biradially symmetrical. And anthozoans only polyp form exists in the life cycle. Medusa is absent. Medusa is absent. Only polyp exists in the life cycle. Medusa is absent. Now, in anthozoans, mesoglia is deposited with connective tissue fibers and cells. That is shows tendency towards the triploblastic condition here now. Mesoglia is deposited with connective tissue fibers and cells here now. Now, anthozoa. The gastrovascular cavity is divided into several chambers by vertical septa called mesenteries. Vertical septa called mesenteries are there in the gastrovascular cavity, dividing the entire gastrovascular cavity into several chambers. You know. Within the mesenteries, the digestive glands and aconchia are present. The digestive glands and aconchia are present. The clusters of stinging cells are known as aconchia. In anthozoa, the stinging cells are present both in epidermis and gastrodermis, but the sense organs and gonads in anthozoa are endodermal in origin here now. The gastrovascular cavity towards the anterior end, it has got an imagination called stomodium or gullet. Stomodium or gullet is the antemost evagination of gastrovascular cavity here now. On the stomodium or gullet or actinopharynx, there are two ciliated grooves at the corners here now. The ciliated grooves present at the corners of the gas, uh, the stomodium 
or actinopharynx or gullet are called siphanoglyphs. The ciliated grooves present at the corners of the stomodium are called siphanoglyphs. The siphanoglyphs draw water currents into the gastrovascular cavity to facilitate nutrition and respiration. Then, the anthozoans, all of them are bisexual. Then, the fertilization is internal in them. They have got a characteristic larva called planula. Planula is the characteristic larva of anthozoans. You know. Now, anthozoans are known for the formation of corals. The dried up exoskeleton of an anthozoan polyp deposited with calcium carbonate is called coral. The anthozoans are also called acnozoans. You know. These anthozoans you now exhibit a unique phenomena called corals. As I made a mention earlier, the dried up exoskeleton of an anthozoan polyp deposited with calcium carbonate is called coral. The exoskeleton of a single polyp is called exoskeleton of a single polyp is called coral light. The exoskeleton of many polyps is called corallum. Exoskeleton of many polyps is called corallum. Now, within the corallum or coral light, the polyps multiply by budding to form enormous number of polyps. You know. Their exoskeletons collectively form a huge mound or hill under sea water. A mound of corals is called coral reef. Mound of corals is called coral reef. Now, on the basis of the location, coral reefs are divided into three types fringing reefs, the coral island present in the shallow waters is called fringing reef. Barrier reef, the coral island which grows away from the sea coast almost at the center of the sea, far away from the sea coast you now is called barrier reef. Barrier reef uh, may grow in a horseshoe shaped form you now enclosing water at the center. It is surrounded by water, at the center also it encloses water. The largest barrier reef is present in Australia which is known as the Great Barrier Reef of Australia. Then another type of coral island is atoll. The atoll is a coral island that grows in a horseshoe shaped form enclosing a lagoon at the center. The largest atoll is present in Maldives and it is called Suvadiva of Maldives. Suvadiva of Maldives happens to be the largest atoll. And some of the important, the most important anthozoans are Metridium, is commonly called sea anemone, Fungia, is commonly called mushroom coral, meandrina is commonly called brain coral, chubipora is commonly called argon pipe coral, alcyonum commonly called dead man's finger or it is also called mermaid gloves. Millipora and stylasta both are commonly called fire serpent corals. They belong to hydrozoa. Only these two corals, Millipora and Stylaster, which are commonly called fire serpent corals, they belong to class hydrozoa. Then next you have uh, Meandri uh, Fungia, mushroom coral, Meandrina, brain coral, Chubipora, organ pipe coral, Alcyonum, dead man's finger, or mermaid gloves, Millipora and Stylaster. 
fire serpent coral so these are some of the the most important uh, the corals of uh, the anthozoa apart from this if you want you can heliopora blue coral madripora staghorn coral or true stony coral true stony coral antipathus black coral antipathus black coral are some of the the most important corals that belong to class anthozoa